It's just like a sila moment, and you think, well, what is that? Just like take a break, breathe in the presence, get refreshed in his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Kelly, would you bring me a microphone, please? Thank you. I just really feel like there's a couple people that need to give a testimony in here. Any volunteers, or do you need to be voluntold? <laughs> okay, raise your hand if you want to come up and give a testimony. Okay, come on up. If you come on this side, or okay, I was gonna have him come on this side. Okay, come on this side, then Kelly can help you up. She didn't bring her cane. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. You can come on up here on this side. Climbing stairs has not been something I've been doing. <laughs> yeah, climbing stairs she hasn't been able to do for a while. Oh. Tell everybody your name and what God has done for you. Lydia Ross. And last Saturday I went to a meeting where Joan was ministering, and the Lord healed me of a broken neck, and I had metal in my neck. I couldn't turn my neck at all, which I can do now. <laughs> I simply could not stand up. I couldn't put my hands together to praise the Lord or to pray. Um, broken shoulder and a rotator cuff and arthritis throughout me, and it's all better. And, Isn't that, and it's all, all better. better. And we're not talking anything about my heart, which has completely changed. Yeah, she, she went through a total transformation, got a facelift while we were there. And she started laughing. And how long had it been since you had laughed? Gosh, I don't remember. <laughs> most, I, of her, most of her life. I cannot remember all my life. I really can't. I just had a bad childhood, and I can't remember laughing before. So. <laughs> but she sure did on Saturday in Corsicana. And we have here. <laughs> and also here. Isn't that great? Awesome. Big blessing. Thank you all. God bless you. Okay, come on over here. Hi. Name? Pastor George Williams. So um, I'm originally from Liberia, and um, during the Civil War in my country, um, uh, uh, June's father and mother and some others, pastor from the United States, sponsored a Bible college, which I was in for two years. So when I came to this country in 2010, I was like uh, looking on YouTube, and then I saw you, so I began to follow your program. And um, it was um, April of this year that I came, uh, moved over to Texas. Yesterday I went home, the amazing thing, you know, when you talk about testimony and sometimes money, and you say it's not only money, but something God has done. Uh, I went home yesterday evening, and I met my associate degree home uh, through the mail. Uh, that came from um, the Vision University uh, in America here. Since 10 years, I attended two years in, um, in Africa, um, uh, 2019 and 2010, and I came to this country in 2010, so I never received my documents. Um, but that was something that God did for me among the many that he has done. And I would be ungrateful if I don't say it. I'm so grateful to him that, you know, I went home yesterday and I received my um, associate degree. I gave God the praise. I, give him a now, I know the orders will come. I know financial miracles will come. Yes. So when did you ask for it to come? 2010? No, no, no. Just prior to this conference, wow. when I was studying doing my work, the Holy Spirit prompted me like uh, two days. It's like, George, call the school. Ask them for your documents. So that's what I did. And then um, I spoke with the... Um, the lady in charge of the students' affairs and uh, Katie, and then she told me, she said, uh, write this 
she explained, she said, write this, compose this letter, and send it to me, and I will send it to the uh, department responsible. He said, because all your documents are here, and you have an associate degree here, so as soon as they approve of it, we'll send it to you. So when I attended the conference, um, like since we started, it was uh, yesterday when I mm -hmm. went home, and then I met in the mail, so it and was a lot. things that have been withheld yes. are coming, yeah. including his paper. And you know, let me just add this quick. A uh, similar story with you. I, when I came out, I was told I was dumb. I would become nothing. I'm a failure. I'm useless. And every worst curses were released upon me from my father. And so I try, each time I tried to go to school, I would not complete. Anything I put my hand to do, I would not complete. It would not be successful. I would struggle. I've been pastoring, I checked it the last time when I was here. Um, I checked how many years I've been, like 29 years I've been pastoring in the ministry from Liberia to here, you know? Mm -hmm. But I'm grateful to God for all that he's done and what he continued to do. And I was one of those that the Lord sent here for this program. Mm -hmm. And we are going to change the world in Jesus' name. Yes. Now, have you been struggling um, over like those years that you've been in ministry? Absolutely, Jones. <laughs> um, you, you, I cannot. Okay. Look. Now, let me just point out here. He's been struggling because of the word curses. Yes. And the word curses were broken off of him today Amen. when we said the prayers. Amen. And now, watch what's going to happen. So I've been struggling in ministry. I know. The struggle's over. Amen. In Jesus' name, it Amen. is. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to have you come up over here, and then Lisa can come up over there. Be sure to tell everybody your name. Lisa Woods. Okay, so Lisa and Lisa. Lisa that works Lisa. out good. <laughs> so last November, um, my husband and I both came down with COVID. My husband had a massive blood clot that caused a um, massive stroke and uh, turned our world upside down. Yes. Um, multiple TIAs, and, uh, TIAs on top of that. Um, and he's, you know, been going through PT, OT, speech, all of that. Um, I was told to plan his funeral, that I should plan for him to die. And I said, no, I have to speak another word, which is what I did. I went in, put my hands on him. Long story short, he's a miracle to even be here. He's right over there in the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> but that all being said, um, in December of last year, I applied for him for disability because we have to get restored, right? So in that process, um, I applied for him disability. Um, if you, any of you have applied for disability, you know the first time it hardly ever goes through. You have to reapply and maybe reapply again. Well, yesterday, um, so day before yesterday, I felt in my spirit to to um, give 53, Isaiah 53, 5, right, into the offering. And so um, I tried, but the app wasn't working or I was doing something wrong. Long story short, I, I got it to go through yesterday. Yesterday, it went through. Yesterday, I checked my bank account. There was over $5,000 in there. Awesome. Not only that, but I've had scoliosis ever since I was a child, well, since I was born. When we were praying for each other down here, um, the lady in the back, I can't remember, Ev Ev Evan Lee, anyway, whatever. Somebody. So she, she prays for me, right? And she's already a little bit shorter than I am anyway, but she puts her hands, you know, neck, C curve, all that, sorry. Um, and I just started growing. I grew up yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, she kept going down and I, she, she kept looking at me and she's like, you kept going up and up. And I mean, I tell you, everything was I pray like for my shorter. arms to grow sometimes to get right. down. <laughs> so not only did we get a blessing financially, One and that many coming. Yes. Yeah. Yes, monthly, you know, and then not only that, but then I was, I was healed. And I was just sharing with, you know, a friend of mine that I've never sat on a seat and felt the back on my mm -hmm. whole back. You know, I'm, I've never done that. And, and it's been strange, you know, but it's been awesome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And then I prayed for my friend and she's sitting back there. She needs to be up here. She just got blessed with $600 today. I'm telling it. 
Okay, she break. just got blessed today. Isn't that good? <laughs> there she is. She's standing up. So okay, anyway. she's coming up here. Come that up on this side. <laughs> if your name is Lisa, you have to. You can't come up yet. No, just kidding. <laughs> And I know that Christine wanted a shofar, and somebody gave her money for a shofar. Isn't that cool? Okay, so, so all of a sudden you got blessed with $600. Yes. Now, I called this morning. I called my bank to check, and there was nothing there. And so as we were getting ready to come back this evening, and I had sold yesterday. And so we get mad, and so I called again to check, and uh, she said, well, there's $700 that I said, well, I just called this morning. She said, well, I don't know who you talked to because it's here in your bank. And so don't I said, <laughs> so I said to her, I said, can you give me the last five transactions? Maybe you have the wrong account. And she said, uh, she went and she, she started giving me the five, the last five transactions. So I'm saying, okay, that's, that's my account. <laughs> that's my account. But she said, is there. Isn't that you know? great? Yes, yes. And so I came back and I had been I had an envelope and I said, okay Lord, I'm believing you for C to sow tonight. And so when I called and she told me that was in my account, I said, okay. I made up my envelope. I put my uh, card number uh, information on there. So I said, okay, tonight I'm doing Deuteronomy 111. Isn't that great? He gives seed to the sower. Now, a couple of you come on over here. Look at this crowd. This is really awesome. And the thing is, it's like, let me just say, the dam has broken. I knew it would, but the dam has broken. Okay. Now, Lisa, tell us what happened to you. I woke up on Wednesday morning with a blood clot in my leg. and uh, A big one. And, and painful one. Very painful. And hallelujah, it's gone. <laughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> Laid hands on their right about lunchtime, I think it was, and I said, Name Jesus, you have to go. All the pain go, everything, done. So I come back and she goes, It's gone. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay. All right. <laughs> Tell them your name so everybody gets to know everybody. Uh, my name is Mary. <laughs> okay. And um, um, I had been, I had an accident and I couldn't even move my, rope, my, my shoulders, I had fallen on concrete. And uh, I had, and then I had also I fallen on, by the tub and I broke these ribs, and then I had to take tests because of the workman's comp, and even that's a battle there. And then I, I even quit handling it because it was too much stress for me. And then, um, you know, they tried to do some therapy on here. They electrocuted my hand and stuff like that. So I had to learn how to use my hand again and all the medication that I was taking. Then the test when I had my broken rib, I pulled this cart, you know, like. Um, what is it called? Workman's Comp have you to see if you're dis disabled or whatever. He had me pull and hold on to things. Just keep holding. I said, I don't have the ability. And I pulled this 100-pound cart while I, I was under medication. And the next day, I couldn't move my body. I couldn't even talk. And they go, well, you got to call. You know, they, it's just a battle anyway. And, you know, with all that stress and with the medication, I couldn't even, I had to get a coloring book. And number one, red. There's where my mind was, just to get my mind going. So I just kept believing and fighting, you know, telling the devil, no, you know, I'm going to come through this. Because the Lord told me I was going to go through a test, a very hard test, and, and you know, through dreams and everything. But anyway, I just like said, okay. And I just went and I read. I said, okay. Job went through a test and Peter went through a test. He said, but when you come through, go, go help your brother. So I said, okay, so then Joan started having meetings here. I'm to, my friend would tell me to come in over here. So I came when Robert Larson was here. And then I was watering my plants. I came Saturday, and then the Lord, I was watering my plants. The Lord told me, go to, go to churches at Jones. I said, but Lord, she doesn't have church there. She said, I said, but she has a service. And I looked, and she had a service that, that day. And I came, and a friend of mine that we were going to come do an or ordination, she was sitting there. Well, we hadn't talked for a while. And I, and and somebody who sat next to her said, is that your sister? She goes, no. And then, uh, and then she says, come sit here. I sat there. She gets a card, and she says, if you want the ordination, I will pay for it. So mm -hmm. that night she bought it. I said, oh, yes. Then you pray about teach it. You. Yes. <laughs> I, knew that one, so I said, yes. And so she, you know, she bought my books that night. And Monday she paid my fee. 
And, you know, I started studying, 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 just reading, reading, and praying. I prayed for everything. I prayed every prayer laying on my hands and on my body and everything. Even my prostrate, I don't have no, <laughs> no, I was praying every prayer. That's how literally, because I was like, I'm, I'm going to get my health back, because I said, you know, I just believe God's word, you know. I don't have an option to not to get well because right. Jesus paid. I have no other option. I got to get well because he paid for it, yeah. you know. So that's the way I think. <laughs> so anyway, I came, and I, w- I came during the meetings where, uh, that, I think that was the journey, and then the next one was that whole meeting when you had all, uh, who was the last one? Mantles, I came mantles. I would sit there, I couldn't sit. I had to sit here, I was in pain. And even when, what's his name came? Um, he had his, guard, his guards there and I'll be like this and they'll be looking at me. I said, no, this is pain. I, I mean, I was like, I felt so uncomfortable because they're like looking, anybody's gonna move and pull up the gun. <laughs> and I was like, oh God, but I kept coming for prayer, prayer. That's what I said, I need an overhaul. And you had no idea what I've been going through, and I just, but I keep moving. I don't. I couldn't drive. I couldn't. Walk. This is the women's translation of what happened. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, I'm okay. Sorry, so you, teachers, you have a, you have a minute left. Okay. And then uh, anyway, so I've been praying, and God has healed me. And then when Joan prayed for me, I couldn't. And, and remember, she, I came up, and she said, "Did you check my regarding my account?" But I thought she was going to tell me I got up without pain, without ease, and I'm and my lungs have been getting stronger. My mind has getting better. I mean, and I, I'm just telling you, it just got a fight and God showed me just like two women when they have a purse on sale, one's pulling this one, the other one's when no one's gonna let go. And especially if it's a bargain, God told me, you, I said, devil, you gotta let go, this one's mine. That type of battle is the fight in the woman. I'm not saying that it, you know, but anyway, but I'm just getting a she lot got better. The purse, oh, and then the right? flags, you see me doing the flags? I'm like saying, oh my God, you know, so. I'm she couldn't do the flags now. just literally a few weeks ago. Yep. Isn't that great? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. Come on to the middle a little bit. Okay. okay. So my name is Sister Soldier. And so I Sister came here. Sister Soldier? Sister Soldier, yes. Okay. So, That's a cool name. <laughs> thank you. God gave it to me. Okay. Um, so first, I, doing all the prayer, I received, like, my, my right knee was swollen when I came here. It's not swollen anymore. My hips is not aching anymore um, from the trauma injury that I had that you prayed over me with. And I've received five financial blessings. Since you've been here? Since I've been here. Yeah. The dam's broken, folks. Yeah. The dam has broken. So the first night, I didn't know that I had received a deposit, but I so I've been sowing every opportunity that has arised. And the first, the first night I sold, and then the next day, my husband called me and told me that our tax return had been deposited. And then I looked, and he also had a raise from, so that was two. And then- Now, I the looked, tax return came in, the, you know, the refund came in from April. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me repeat. <laughs> the dam has broken. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. And then so, he got a raise. Then what? he got a raise. Yeah. Okay. So he get, he received the raise. His um, boss had told him he was gonna get a raise last month sometime. We didn't know when it was coming, but it showed up. It's there it's, now because it's, it's now. your ear. It's, okay. Yes, it's there. And so when I looked again, I looked yesterday, and I happened to see that I had another deposit that came in on the night that we came. So that was a $200 deposit from being a real estate associate with Keller Williams, just just come, just came. And then I had another uh, $600 deposit from a client that had over, that was overdue in his bill. And I just wasn't gonna keep sending the tab. I just said, well, at the end of this month, I know what I will be doing. So then I received the payment. I was like, okay. <laughs> And then today when I was sitting down and looking, and actually this evening I saw I had another $100 unexpected deposit in my account. Yeah. That's all I get in two days yeah. here, maybe and it, three. And it's totaling probably about over $6,000. Well, the one was 5000 Yeah. And one was 600 and then one, and then another here and there. No, one was, one was, Four thousand, and the other one was 
and a raise. 600 over the raise. And then the 600 from the client, 200, and then another 100. Yeah. The dam's broken. Glory to God. Sure. Woohoo. Woohoo. One of you come down here also. Okay. Okay. I wanted to give a testimony when you were in Lake Charles. Okay. I think this but was in sorry. May, March or May. Well, she came up to me. I was sitting down and she said, You were supposed to get a new car. Why you didn't get it? And you know how she do Are this you little listening? thing. You're supposed to get a new car. She did like this. I said, well, my husband did want to get me a new car, but I said, the economy is bad. Do you remember that? And so you say, but how old is that car? I say, by 10 or 11 years, I said, you need a new car. So you told me I was going to get a new car. So when you told me that, I said, OK. I said, we don't buy brand new cars. We buy them one or two years old. Well, we went looking around. All the one year and two year old had like over 100,000 miles. So he told me, I say, show us a brand new car. So I got a brand new car, and I don't have no debt. Isn't that cool? And wait a minute. Oh, I got to tell you this one here. Okay. okay. She's got a uh, scriptural giving card yeah. right here, too. Okay. I gave Mr. Kelly was over there, and I said, what are all those books for? He said, that's for the school. I said, I've been trying to go over there for over 15 years. I'm here. Mm -hmm. I had a $200. I bought the set of books. Didn't know how it was going to come. I planted 100. You just need a new car to get you here, yeah. that's for sure. I planted that $111. Mm -hmm. I said, now, Lord, I'm not going to have to spend none of my money. I'm trying you. Mm -hmm. Prove okay. me now. So then, here with your tithes and offerings. That's right. Deuteronomy 111, uh, I'm going to bless you a thousand, thousand times more numerous than you are, as I've already promised. So we're getting all that together. Mm -hmm. So then I said, well, it was coming up close. I said, well, Lord, I haven't gotten anything. I just got my money I'm going to have to pay with. But I'm trusting you because that's what I asked for. So one night I was listening. I said, Lord, I don't have but $5 in my little chunk, chunk change account. So I sent that, I sold Philippians 4 and 19. Mm -hmm. Went to church that Sunday, my son Ronaldo, hey Ray, he said, Mama, me and Mary are going to give you the $400 for school. I said, okay. They brought me the $400. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so then I'm like, it's got closer and closer. So last week I said, well, Lord. I still got to use my little Social Security check. Now I'm 75. I said, I had to pay my, use my Social Security check. I said, but you're supposed to give me the money. I'm not supposed to use mine because I'm going for your kingdom. <laughs> so then my husband, he gave me $700. He said, now this is going to pay for your hotel. You want to join the alliance? They're going to pay for your alliance. I said, yeah. So I was walking around. I said, well, me and the Lord. I said, Lord. I say, now, nah, you promised me? And it's kind of like, no, I, you told me. <laughs> and then I say, well, but I told you. <laughs> and so Sunday, I go to church. And we don't have a big congregation, $565. Tell me what the Lord won't do. Tell me what the Lord won't do. Amen, amen. I don't know about you, but I'm really enjoying these testimonies. <laughs> this is going to take up most of my message tonight, and we'll leave a little bit of room for Kelly. Hi. Hi. So my financial testimony started before I got here. Um, I was trying to figure out how to pay for my plane ticket, and it was really expensive from Atlanta. Normally, it's like $200 to get to Houston. It was like 5 and I was like, eh. Well, I had a credit on Southwest for $100, and so I was like, okay, well, I'll use my credit, and I'll just pay the difference. But when I went to go use my credit, I couldn't. So I called them in, and I said, hey, I'm trying to figure this out. They were like, well, if you do this instead of doing that and leave it this, time then we can get your ticket for forty dollars 
So my round trip ticket from Atlanta was forty dollars to get here. So that was um, testimony number one. Well, I wanted to make sure I had money to sow into the offering. And so what I had been taught by my pastor, if you don't have enough to meet your needs, then that's your seed. That's right. So I sowed into um, someone's life. And it was on like a Sunday. And by two, by Thursday, a client had paid me in full 10 times more than what I sowed. Isn't that great? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The dam has broken. Okay. And then be sure to get the next one up here. Yeah. I am terribly stage frightened. <laughs> well, just so, talk to me. Okay. So this makes it a little easier. My life was similar to yours. Never going to amount to anything. Um, basically, mother was an alcoholic, father was an alcoholic, very abusive. And I went into the military thinking, okay, I'm going to grow up, get away from them. <clears throat> Got very sick during the Gulf War, ended up in the hospital for two weeks, and have had chronic health issues ever since. And last year, um, I, I ended up becoming a nurse practitioner. My mom never thought I'd become anything. But I became a nurse practitioner. Last year, I had to give up my clinic because I got breast cancer. And it was bad. They said, you know, if you don't do anything, you probably have a year to live. So I said to them, I said, I think there's something else wrong because I couldn't, um, I couldn't turn my head without having difficulty breathing. I couldn't, um, you know, like swallow very well and I would feel nauseous, and my arms and legs didn't work well. So I finally talked them into getting me an MRI. The MRI showed that I had a broken bone in my neck. So before the cancer could be even be treated, I decided to move forward with getting this surgery. So they did this surgery, and that was good. And then I had both of my breasts removed and um, went through radiation, no chemotherapy. But then I thought, OK, I'm going to get ready to go back to work. And it was like, as soon as I thought about going back to work, I started having blood in my urine. And they said, you know what, you've got cancer in your urine. So they did these biopsies on my liver, ureters, and I'm sorry, not liver, uh, bladder, ureters, and kidneys. And they said, we couldn't find anything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I stood on faith the entire time. I almost didn't come here because I've been having problems with the left side. So they're still checking my urine because it shows that there's cancer, but there's no cancer in the biopsies. But I got prayed for, and it's gone. The Isn't pain is completely gone. Yeah. Did you have reconstructive surgery? I did. Okay. I did, but I'm, I'm not finished. I, I had the reconstructive, and um, I have to go back on the 21st okay. to get yeah, the rest of it done. Okay. And have you had prayer for the spirit of cancer? No, but my mother went to jail for murder, and I think... I'm like, yeah. hello. I just wanted you to hear what she had to say. And he's like, because she just said it so nonchalantly. And she was into witchcraft. Yeah, you, I want you to come forward with me just a little bit more. Okay. Kelly, up here, please. Okay. So her mother went to jail for murder. She was into witchcraft. This is her mom, her DNA mom. Okay. Now, you've heard me talk about family trauma opens up the door for the breast cancer. Okay, so there's the family trauma that opened up the door for the breast cancer. Okay, and so the trauma needs to go. You may have prayed for the trauma, but I'm going to pray for the trauma. Spirit of cancer needs to go. And any cancer cell throughout this body has to go. It's not an option staying. Right? You have no idea who you're sitting next to. Okay? So cute. If she's gone through breast cancer, mastectomy, mother killed, you know, she's in jail for, for murder. That's just three, and she's got more. So you never know who you're going to sit next to, but understand who you're sitting next to is a God appointment. Okay? So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life. Anger, anger comes from unmet expectations. Mom didn't meet her expectations, to say the least. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, all the trauma of that, I command it to be gone in Jesus' name. I curse the spirit of cancer, every prion in Jesus' name. I command it to be gone. 
in Jesus' name, every cancerous cell has to leave out of this body. I command all scar tissue to go, supernatural, Holy Ghost, breast reconstruction in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And it's a real confirmation, you know, what I've been teaching about the family trauma opens the door for it. Okay, your turn. Hi. I was here Sunday night. Okay. And I decided to do the classes, now or never. Went home, was told I couldn't go, couldn't come. So I go to Baller Island, and I called you all up Monday to see if I was still able to get in. I said, well, I'm going. I'm coming to the classes. I still told you you're not going to do it. Didn't want to pay for the classes. We're talking about someone in my home. He sold a trailer. What, Monday? Tuesday. Tuesday morning. I'm getting ready to come up here. He sells a trailer, and the person's coming to pay for it. And I thought, well, you know what? There's my money. I had talked about the layaway plan, the payment plan, pay it later, pay as you go, but God. And, and I didn't leave until I had the money to pay for my classes, but God. Isn't that great? But God, within, within me saying I was going to do it, not even 24 hours, because he knew that trailer was going to be sold, mm -hmm. but God. And you have his blessing being here? No. Not yet. <laughs> no. Not yet. Not okay, yet. that's okay. Thank you. Okay, come on up here. Okay, I'm not going to be up here all night. I Good. could be, but I'm not going to. Yeah, but I'll cut. I'll, I, that's why I'm holding up the microphone. Yes. What's the time We've, limit? Two minutes. Okay, Lord Jesus. <laughs> um, my friend Patty and I that we live in Denton, Texas. We're very close friends, and we've worked together some in the ministry. Uh, since I'm going to be ordained, and so is she, it will get a little more exciting, I'm sure. We had all kinds of obstacles to overcome to get here. It was phenomenal. Who didn't? I, I kind of figured that after I started hearing other people. Not one testimony. person raised their hand, by the way. Uh, yeah. I'm a caregiver, and I had 30 hours booked to work, which was going to pay for everything. And at the last minute, on Friday, I was told, sorry, they canceled. When you work as a caregiver, you give your all, but you have to know that you're on call 24-7. And you may or may not get to keep whatever's promised, because they can cancel if they don't like you, or if they change their mind for any reason. So it's very unstable work. And God told me it's time for a change. This whole nightmare, I was talking to different ones on the phone here, telling them what's going on. And if God wants me down there, he's going to have to break through a bunch of stuff to get me down there. Well, he did. And um, on a Thursday, I spent the entire day fasting and praying, saying, God, do something. If you want me down here, you better do something. Friday, I looked on my CNA, which is a website for caregivers, and there was an organization in Flower Mound that was hiring people on the spot who had any experience. I've had 40 years. So long story short, I got there, found out it's a spirit-filled memory care place. The owners are spirit-filled. The manager is spirit-filled. When I walked in her office, she had Jesus all over the walls. Everybody that works there is spirit-filled. People that are on the locked unit where I'll be working in the memory care facility were content. And I know what a chemical restraint looks like. They were content. There is such love and care in that place. I'm going to go to work there. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, part-time, 12 hours a day, 15 to $20 an hour. They'll let me come down here anytime I need to because when I told them where I'm coming and they heard the word Tomball, Texas, their response was, oh, and they went and told everybody on staff, she's going to Tomball. I didn't know that was that well-known, but it, it's apparently not. it is. 
<laughs> well, they know you. In that cir circle. <laughs> they know you. And the other thing, very quickly, my two minutes is probably up. My it friend, is. All right. My friend, my friend Patty was very sick, and I was getting mad at the enemy to where I was called upon by the Lord to fast and pray for her today. I said, God, I want to see her come up out of this sick bed before we leave here. And then we got to thinking she might have COVID because she was feeling like it and had a lot of symptoms. So we wound up having to go get the test and we were praying in tongues the whole time. Oh, God, God, they both have to be negative. God, they've got to be negative. They were both negative. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the only time we want to be negative, right? Well, I asked for a couple. <laughs> the dam broke. Hallelujah. The dam has broken. Not only in my life, but in your life, too.